Yo, what's going on guys? Then my offer simple snippets back with another video tutorial on quantitative aptitude. Now in this video tutorial, we'll be solving five different numericals based on the problem of ages. That is today's topic is going to be problems on age. So in the previous couple of video tutorials, we saw different problems based on time, distance, speed, compound interest, simple interest, percentage, profit and loss, so on and so forth. So if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when I upload more quantitative aptitude tutorials on different topics and many other topics that I'll be covering up on this channel. So with that being said, let's get started with today's topic. Okay, so before we actually get on to the solving of numericals, let's just read out certain important formulas and points based on this topic. So as you can see on the screen, I have five different points noted down. So you just need to keep these points in mind. So probably you can make a note of it. So let me just start off with the first point. Now, if the current age of any person is X, then N times the age is NX. Now this is pretty but obvious that we are just multiplying the age with n so that would give us n x now this n is a multiplying factor moving to point 2 if the current age is x now this current age means the age in today's time that is the present age so then the age n years later would be x plus n so if today in 2017 age is 5 years then after 3 years in 2020 the age is obviously going to be 5 plus 3 which is 8 years so this is what is just mentioned in that point which is pretty easy to understand moving to third point if the current age is x years then the age n years ago is going to be x minus n so this is just the opposite to this so if age is 5 years in 2017 the age in 2015 would be 5 minus 2 which would be 3 years so moving on to point number 4 the age in a ratio a is to b will always be ax into b x. So this x is some multiplying factor and the ratio is always going to be a is to b because this x and x will, can get cancelled. So if the current age is x then 1 by n of the age is x by n. So again this is 1 by n which is a multiplying factor. So if current age is 10 and we are multiplying it with 1 by 5 that would give us 10 by 5 which is 2. So these are just simple 5 points which you need to remember or you just need to have it in mind and it is pretty common sense. So with that being said let's move on to the actual numericals. Okay so as you can see we have our first question. Okay, so let me just read out the first question. Father is aged three times more than his son Ronit and after eight years, he would be two and a half times of Ronit's age. So after furthermore eight years, how many times would he be of Ronit's age? So let us first assess the first line. We know that father is aged three times more than his son's Ronit's age. So what we can say is let Ronit's age be X years. So this is for present time. So if we assess the first line, father's age is three times more than his son Ronit's age, which means if we represent this mathematically father's age is equal to three times more than his son's age which is x so three times plus x is what father's age is in present time so this is going to be 4x so this line or this statement can be represented mathematically in this form because it is three times more than his son's age and his son's age is x and we are then multiplying it with three plus his son's age so it's not just 3x but 3x plus x so this is one key factor that you need to remember because otherwise you'll simply assume it as 3x. It is 3 times more than his son's age. So 3 times is okay but we need to add that age of Ronit as well. So that is why one extra x is over here. Okay so in present time what all data we have is we know Ronit's age is x years and father's age is 4x. So now let's read the second clause or second statement. So after 8 years he would be two and a half times of Ronit's age. Now this he is his father. So after 8 years Ronit's new age will be x plus 8 years and father's new age would be 4x plus 8 years. So this is pretty but obvious because we are just adding 8 years more and what they are saying is there is some relation between their age 8 years after that is after 8 years he would be two and a half times of Ronit's age. So mathematically we can say 4x plus 8 is going to be 2 1 by 2 of x plus 8. So this is his father's age 8 years from present time which is equal to two and a half times of his son's age. So this is his son's age. So 2 1 by 2 can also be written as 5 by 2. So 4x plus 8 is equal to 5 by 2 x plus 8 you just need to multiply this to this that is 2 2s are 4 plus 1 and we just need to keep the denominator same so that's how we can convert a mixed fraction to a normal fraction so that's how we get 5 by 2 and now we have got an equation wherein we just need to find out one variable value so we can simplify this and further when we actually go ahead and calculate we will get x as 8 so i'm not actually going ahead with the calculation steps because you can easily calculate that it's simple mathematics and ultimately you'll get x value so what is this x this x is ronit's age 
at present time. So father's age would be this is Ramit's present age. So x plus three times of x would give us four x, which is equal to eight into four, which would give us thirty two, which would be father's present age. So we got their present age as eight and thirty two. However, what we have been asked is after further eight years, which means that it is totally asking after sixteen years, how many times would he be of Ramit's age? Because after first line they're saying after eight years he would be two and a half times of Ramit's age, and after further eight years, which means that 8 plus 8 years which is 16 years so if we add 16 to both these values after 16 years ronit's age would be 8 plus 16 which is going to be 24 and his father's age will be 32 plus 16 which is going to be 48 so what they are asking is how many times would he be of ronit's age which means how many times older would be father compared to ronit so in order to do that we have to take a ratio so you can say father's age upon his son ronit's age is equal to 48 by 24 so this is going to Give us two, so the ratio is going to be two, and in the options you can see two times, which means that after 16 years, father is going to be twice the age of Ronit. So this is going to be our final answer. So this was question number one. So let's move on to question number two now. Okay, so let me just read out question number two. Now the sum of ages of five children born at the interval of three years each is fifty years. What is the age of the youngest child? Okay, so again they have not given us any actual age, but they have given a relation between the sum of ages of five children who are born at a regular interval of three years. So if first child is born in twenty seventeen, the next child would be born in twenty twenty, and the next would be in twenty twenty three. So this is the pattern that they have given for five children, and they are saying that after taking a sum of their ages. That sum is going to be fifty years, and what they are asking is what is the age of the youngest child, which means that the child born last. So we'll start off with the solution and we'll make an assumption. So we'll say let age of youngest child be x, which means that the child that was born last, we are assuming his age to be x years. So the second youngest child would be x plus three years. The third youngest child would be x plus six years. Fourth would be x plus nine years, and fifth would be x plus twelve years. So the fifth one would be the older, and the first one. That is x years would be the youngest. So how do I get this representation? So let's just say if the youngest child is of like ten years, the second youngest would be ten plus three, which is thirteen years, because he is born three years earlier to that guy, which means he is three years older. And we know from the statement that they are born at a regular interval of three years. So if one guy is born in twenty seventeen, as I mentioned, the next child would be born in twenty twenty, and so on. So what they are saying is the sum of these ages is equal to fifty. So now we can form an equation. That is, we have to take a sum of these values. So x, which is this value plus x plus 3 plus x plus 6 now this 6 is because we have added 3 plus 3 this is 3 plus 3 plus 3 and this is 4 times 3 that is 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 then we add x plus 9 and we have x plus 12 and this is equal to 50 so this is what they have given us in the first statement so this simple english is translated to a mathematical equation and now we can simplify this easily when we solve this we get 5x is equal to 20 and that would give us x is equal to 4 so what is this x this x is age of the youngest child so that is what we've assumed and that is what is asked in the question so option a is going to be our final answer so again in these types of problems usually we have been given an english statement which has certain relation between the different ages and from that statement we have to arrive to an equation which is something like this and then we have to solve it to get the final answer so initially usually we have to make certain assumptions like what we took here is let the age of youngest child be x and something like that sort okay so let's move on to question number 3 now So let me just read out the question. A father said to his son, "I was as old as you are at the present, at the time of your birth. If the father's age is thirty-eight years now, the son's age five years back was." Okay, so this question sounds a little tricky. Let let us just read it again, and we'll try to break it in parts. A father is saying to his son, "I was as old as you are at the present, at the time of your birth." Which means in present time, the age of son is equal to father's age when the son was actually born. Is equal to father. Father's age when his son was born. So, if father's age is 38 years now, the son's age five years back would be. So, what we'll do is we'll try to make an assumption. We'll say let son's age be x. So, this is for present time, and we know that father's age is equal to 38 years, and this is again for present time. Now, again, we have to just analyze this statement. What they are trying to say. So, what the father says to his son is when the son was born, which means in past. So, he is talking in past. At that time, his father was equal. 
equal to his age in present time. This means that 38 minus x. So this is what past time, past time when the son was born is equal to x, which is age of son in present time. So this statement mathematically represents this equation. So when the son was born, father's age would be 38 minus x because in present son's age is x. So when he is born, we have to subtract this x from father's age to get father's age in the past. Correct. So 38 minus x is what father's age would be when the son was born. So we got that. And what he is saying is this age is equivalent to son's current age, which is x. So that is the reason why we got this equation. So now we can solve this equation and we get 2x is equal to 38. So x is equal to 38 by 2. So this would give us 19. So what we got is x is equal to 19. So this is not our final answer because what we got is son's present age. But what they are asking is his son's age 5 years back. So we just need to subtract 5 from this. So that would give us 19 minus 5 which would give us 14 years. So this is going to be our final answer. So option A is going to be our final answer and the only trick part in this question was to actually understand this statement that his father said to his son which was a bit tricky to understand but if you represent it mathematically this is what you actually got. Okay so let's move on to the next question now. So let me just read out this question. A is 2 years older than B who is twice as old as C. If the total of the ages of A, B and C be 27 then how old is B? Okay so from this statement we know that age of A plus B plus C is equal to 27. So we've got this equation and what this statement is giving us is the relation between these ages. Now these are three people who have their ages in certain relation. So let's start with the certain assumptions. Now if you read the sentence again that is A is 2 years older than B which means A's age is going to be 2 years more than B and B who is twice as old as C which means C should be the smallest or the youngest one. So what we'll see is let C's age be X years. So C's age is equal to X is what we've assumed. Now B who is twice as old as C. So B's age is equal to 2X and A is 2 years elder than B. So A's age is equal to B's age that is 2X plus 2 because he is 2 years more elder. So we just need to add 2 more years. So we got 1, 2 and 3. So this is the mathematical representation. Now we just need to substitute these into our equation. So A plus B plus C is equal to 27. So just substituting these values A is 2X plus 2 plus B is 2X and C is X is equal to 27. Now again this is a simple equation. We can solve this and we will get 5X is equal to 25. So X is equal to 5. So what we got is C's age. Now what they are asking is how old is B. So B is twice as age of C. So 2 into 5 which is equal to 10. So option D is going to be our final answer. So this was pretty easy question. So let's move on to the last question of today's topic. Okay, so let me just read out the question. Present age of Samir and Anand are in the ratio of 5 to 4 respectively. So Samir upon Anand is equal to 5 by 4. So this is what mathematically we can represent this statement. 3 years hence the ratio of their ages will become 11 is to 9 respectively. What is Anand's present age? So this is just the ratio given to us. So what we'll say is let present ages of both guys be 5x and 4x respectively which means that Samir's age upon Anand's age is equal to 5x upon 4x. Now this x is a multiplication factor because 5 is actually not their age but it is a ratio 5 by 4. So when we multiply it with a common multiplication factor we will get their actual ages. That is the reason why we have to assume this x as a multiplication factor in both the cases because then it will cancel out and give us the original ratio back again. So in present time their ratio is 5x upon 4x but what they are saying is 3 years later the ratio of their age will become 11 is to 9. So after 3 years, so I will write it down over here, after 3 years Samir's age is equal to 5x plus 3 and Anand's age is equal to 4x plus 3. Of course 3 years are being added because 3 years have passed now so their age would increase by 3. But what they are saying is this new ratio is equal to 11 by 9. So again I will write it down over here 5x plus 3 upon 4x plus 3 is equal to 11 by 9. So now we have got an equation because you can simply transfer these values over here by cross multiplying. We will get 9 into 5x plus 3 is equal to 11 into 4x plus 3. So this should give us 45 x 
minus 44 x is equal to 33 minus 27 and I have skipped a couple of steps in between so you can easily calculate that because it is simple mathematics and ultimately we will get x value as 6. So what they are asking is what is Anand's present age. So you can see that we have assumed present age of both as 5x and 4x. So Anand's present age is 4x. So we got x so we just need to multiply it by 4. So Anand's present age is equal to 4 into 6 which is equal to 24 years. So if you can see option A is our final answer. So this was a little different question wherein we had been given with ratios. So we assume the ratios or the ages be 5x and 4x because when the ratio is given we can assume it with a multiplying factor which has to be common. So you can see that we have assumed it here. So this was their present age ratio and after 3 years they have given us a new ratio which is 5x plus 3 upon 4x plus 3 which is equal to 11 by 9. So from this new ratio we got an equation and we then solved it and we got the multiplying factor. So this multiplying factor with this assumed age that is 4 into 6 we got the present age of Anand and similarly we could have also got the age of Samir if you would have multiplied it by 5. Okay so this was question number 5. So that's it for this video guys I hope you understood the different problems that you solved on the topic of problems on age and if you have any doubts or queries you can always let me know in the comment section and also if you want more questions or more topics to be covered on quantitative aptitude let me know in the comment section as well. So if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Peace.